you all for coming. Uh, you know, uh, people have told me as I've traveled all over this district, uh, in the 4th District, where I want to represent those 39 counties, that they can't understand why in the world I would want to run for Congress. Because it's such a mess in Washington right now and nothing's getting done. But I think that's exactly the time when somebody like me needs to run for cooperation with me, and I learned it in the small town where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Mount Pleasant, Iowa, a town of about 8,000 people, and I see a couple of Mount Pleasant people here in the audience right now, so they can verify what I'm going to tell you. So where I grew up, and where I grew up isn't any different from any of the other county seat towns in this state, except that there are two United States highways that meet there, and there has never been a stoplight there, only stop signs. So when you stop, at the intersection of U.S. Highway 218 and U.S. Highway 34, 218 is now the Avenue of the Saints, connecting St. Paul and St. Louis. You literally have to look to the right, you have to look to the left, and you have to make eye contact with the other drivers before you go through the intersection. And it's exactly that spirit of cooperation and making that eye contact that I want to take with me to Washington, because that's what we need right now. a problem solver, not a partisan fighter, and I learned it in my small town, as most of us did, because none of us really cared uh, whether uh, people were Democrats, Republicans, or Independents. When we worked in the booster club stand on Friday night, it didn't really matter. When I taught people's kids in the public schools for 20 years, it didn't really matter. We sat next to people at church, we flipped pancakes with them at the con as breakfast, it simply didn't matter whether we were Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. We all knew that we were going to have to live with each other for the rest of our lives, and we better get along. So that is the spirit that I want to take with me to Washington. And but I'm running for Congress for one reason, one reason only. The way I see it, this job should be about the local. It should be about the people and the issues in these 39 counties, and what people have told me as I've traveled around the 39 counties the new 4th District is what they want is jobs and opportunity. And so my goal in running for Congress is just very simple. I want to make sure that anybody who wants to continue living in a small town like the one where I grew up has that opportunity. But we can't do that if we can't offer the young people who are growing up here in Iowa, if we can't offer them a job that pays a good wage, and that is interesting that will keep them there in their small towns. In 1974, I was a teacher in upstate New York. It was my first job. I had just graduated from college. I left Iowa to go to New York. I had stayed there for the four years that I was in college, and then I got my first job. I made $7,000 a year. I was helping to put my husband through law school. And uh, basically, um, we, in that year, when we were trying to figure out where we wanted to live for the next many years of our lives, we were looking at Western Pennsylvania, we were looking at upstate New York, and the letter came in the mail from my dad. It was on yellow legal paper. Most of the decisions of my life have somehow been made on a yellow legal tablet, but on that particular day, at the top of the letter, it said, here's the job for Tom in my law office, this is how much you can make. Here's the job that you will have in Mount Pleasant, this is how much you can make for your job. And then there were five other things, five other reasons why we should come back to small town Iowa. And we made a list of all the pros and cons and decided to come back to Mount Pleasant and we never turned back. It was the best decision that we ever made. I want to make sure that every person in my district, every person in this state actually, has the ability to look at his or her grandson or son or next door neighbor's children and say, here's the job. We have to have the job attached to this. Here's the job. And I have a plan to make sure that we can offer those good, well-paying jobs to people, to the young people in the state. And basically it involves three different issues. It involves education, it involves cooperation, it involves connection. Uh, education is the keystone of our democracy. Education, whether it's at the early childhood level, whether it's K-12 system, or whether it's our great hidden treasures in the community colleges of Iowa, our small colleges, or in our three regents universities, it is imperative that we make sure that people can continue to learn and adapt to change through the rest of their lives. Second of all, innovation in this state is so very important. This is what we've done for the last 14 years. As we realized that we had to transform our economy from an economy that shipped its corn and beans down the river 
to an economy that added value to corn and beans and everything else we produced here before it leaves the state. And because of that, because we embraced renewable fuels, the biofuel industry, the ethanol industry, and the wind industry, because we committed research and committed resources to that, we have been able to weather this downturn in the economy better than many other states. But now we need to take the next step. And the next step is actually embracing the bioeconomy and making sure that we create innovative products that are made for what's left over after we create the renewable fuels. Whether it's feed additives or whether it's uh, a substitute for plastic or whether really almost everything that I can see from here we could make from the raw materials that we grow outside of every small town in Iowa. And my plan for the future is how we create the small businesses in those small towns well, that will attract young people from our colleges and universities so that we no longer define the success of our children by how far away they get from their hometowns, but we make the case that they don't need to leave those towns or those areas at all. Here's the job, here's the education to get the job, and these are going to be the most exciting jobs in the world. They're going to pay well, and they're going to be about energy, which is we're going to create the Bill Gates of the future right here in Iowa, and we're going to connect them. Them with one of the best connectors, and that is high-speed internet to every one of these little towns, so people in the future will no longer be socially isolated or professionally isolated. You can go to my website if you want to find out any more about the eight different ideas that I have, whether it's energy, whether it's education, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, economic development, whether it's conservation, these are all various areas that I'm interested in, and my website is christyvilsackforiowa.com, and you can look at all the details, because I don't have time to tell you all those ideas that I would like to discuss with you at some time in the future. But I think it's important, if I'm going to be elected to Congress, that you know where I've been, so that you'll know where I want to go. Uh, I, as I told you, I grew up in a small town, but when I was 15 years old, I discovered that my mother had breast cancer. And what happened next is a story that any of you can identify with, because all of us in small towns have had that kind of crisis. And in every town in the state, no matter where I would be, the same thing would happen. Uh, there were people who wanted very much for me and my little brother to continue living our lives as normally as possible. And they stepped in to help our family so that when I was going to a football game on Friday night, there was a meatloaf in the refrigerator. We may not have liked the meatloaf very well, it may not have been our mother's meatloaf, but it was meatloaf, and we came to understand that it was given with the spirit of wanting to make sure that they took care of our family. Uh, when my brother's jeans were too short, there was somebody there to take them to buy new ones. And that sense of pulling together as a community and helping families is something that we all understand in the state. And when it came time for Tom and me to decide whether we were coming back to small town Iowa, and raise a family, I basically decided that I need all of those people to help me raise my children as well. And I think there are a lot of people in this state who would like to have that opportunity if they only knew they also had the job to go with it. Now also, when Tom and I came back, we, uh, we were helping other people get elected, but neither of us have ever thought of running for anything ourselves. Except that one day, a man with post-traumatic stress syndrome walked into our mayor's walked into the city council member and murdered our mayor and shot two city council members. Our children were very young at the time and there were people asking Tom if he would run for office and our kids were afraid that he was going to get hurt and they asked him not to run. But we didn't want our children to grow up in this country thinking that politics was a bad thing and that it was hurtful. And so we basically decided to step up and we've been stepping up ever since. But I've also been a teacher for 38 years and I'm very, very proud of the fact that I'm a public teacher in Iowa. There's no better place I think our best work, Tom and I would both say our best work were the two sons that we raised. One of them is standing right back there, and it's nice to have him here. Jess is here. He's a lawyer here in Des Moines. Uh, so being a mom is really important to me as well. But I also started two nonprofits, and as First Lady, I traveled all over the state advocating for the economic development ideas I'm talking about today, as well as public libraries and public schools and anything that had to do with education. And I traveled all over the world actually on behalf of economic development for, uh, for this state and for these small towns in this district. So uh, the next thing that you need to know is that this campaign 
is of course about the future because all campaigns are about the future. But it's also a campaign to people running against each other. And I think it's really important for you to understand the contrast between the two, the two candidates. Woo! Now, I see this job, as I just explained it to you, very locally. I see this job pretty much the way a teacher sees her classroom on the first day of school. There are 39 counties in my district. As I see it, my job is to get to know them and get to know the needs of each of those counties, which may be a little different from each other, and then continue to advocate and continue to help each of those counties maximize their potential. And that's what I'm gonna do for the two years that I'm in Congress. So uh, the most important thing to know about the two of us is that we see the job differently. I see it locally. I think Steve King sees the job through a Washington lens, through a national lens, and I think he's used this job to promote his own personal agenda and to promote an ideology that really has nothing to do with the economic future of this state. Talking about animal fighting, talking about immigrants as if they're animals, uh, talking about the fact that we sh that he thinks that states should be able to ban contraceptives for all people, married people, uh, all of these things do nothing to promote the economic opportunities that I want to promote in this district. And probably nothing creates the contrast more starkly than how he sees what he calls the fair tax. Uh, the fair tax would actually remove uh, the income tax. It would take away an income tax and it would sub substitute in its place a 23% sales tax. This would be great if you make more than $200,000 a year, but it's not so good for the middle class. And what I want to do with this job is to make sure that we have economic opportunity and we can rebuild the middle class in all of these small towns. So, but I want to make sure that you understand what a 23% sales tax would do. Because every time that you go to the grocery store to buy groceries, every time you go to the drugstore to get a prescription filled, if you go buy a car seat at a local uh, a local store, if you go out to buy a tractor or buy the seed for your next crop, paying 23% on each one of those per purchases is a real burden on the middle class. And that's a, a tremendous tax burden for, for all of us who make less than $200,000 a year. The other thing that you need to remember is if we have no federal income tax in Iowa where we have federal deductibility on our state tax, it automatically sends your state taxes out of the roof as well. So that is a huge uh, tax rate on all of the middle class in Iowa. Uh, the other thing that's really important to know is that we need to balance our budget. It's one of the first things I want to be involved in when I get to Congress, I think. Steve King's had 10 years to balance the budget in Iowa and, and across the country, and one of the things that he did was to make sure that he did not pay for the two wars that we were engaged in, uh, which drove up the deficit. He, he did not uh, pay for Medicare prescription D, and also he raised, uh, he made it possible for people who make more than a million dollars not to pay the taxes that we need to have them pay in order to make sure that we balance our budget. So. There are so many things, whether it's asking seniors to work longer until maybe they're 74, or suggesting that people who don't own property shouldn't be allowed to vote. Uh, issue after issue are issues that Steve King and I would disagree on. And so I think you will see me making a contrast out there, but I want all of you to know that everything that I say publicly, that everything I put out there on TV ads, everything that goes out in my press re releases is all researched and will be factual. And I want to make that promise to all of you. That you know, I see all of these towns in the district pretty much like my hometown. And I see all of the people in these towns pretty much like my friends and neighbors. And I just want to make a commitment to all of you here, whether you live in the district or not, but particularly those people who are here from my district, that when I go to Washington, I will represent your values and represent the things that you care about every day that I'm there. And if you'll stand for me in this election in three months, I will stand for you for the next two years.